In my previous video on the Moondog Labs anamorphic adapter, I briefly mentioned a modification that improved coverage and quality and saw a really enthusiastic response from viewers wanting more information. So now I'm here in Shibuya where the story of this modification got started to share with you the details and 3D files necessary to do it yourself. And for some background on how this all got started, I was using an unmodified 12.5mm Moondog Labs anamorphic adapter to capture candid, documentary footage on my mobile device for a project centered around Shibuya. The adapter originally requires a special phone case to mount, and while secure, I found it too cumbersome to constantly unscrew and remount for the type of footage I wanted to capture. This meant my Moondog Labs adapter saw a lot more wear and tear than it normally would, being thrown in a bag or shoved in a pocket with the lens attached. Eventually this led to the mechanism for horizontal alignment breaking on me, and it became unusable for my intended purpose. And while it's unfortunate that this lens broke on me after about a month of constant use, especially because it was doing such a great job allowing me to capture candid moments with my mobile device, it did allow me to tinker with the broken parts, and what I found was pretty interesting. So this is what the lens looks like after you start to tear it down. Regrettably, I don't have any great photos or video of the actual teardown process, but I'll do my best to explain what each individual part does and its significance for this modification. The first screws that you'll need to remove are these, which separate the rear portion with the threads or bayonet mount from the front lens assembly. That front assembly has what we're most interested in because it houses both elements that make up the anamorphic lens. This plate right here seemed to be an iris and or something to secure the rear element to the main assembly. That being said, I didn't find the rear element to be particularly loose when I first opened this up. It's held in with either some light glue or just friction, I can't really remember. But regardless, for my modification process, this does need to be removed. And beyond that, we also have these screws right here, which allow you to separate the housing and gives you access to the front element. I couldn't really incorporate this into my modification process, but it does allow you to, say, clean the front element if necessary. So that's the inside of the lens itself once you tear it down. And this is my 3D printed mounting solution. Like the original Moondog Labs adapter, it has a 37mm rear diameter, but it's not threaded. You just have to mount it with friction, but I found that in the various models I printed, there's usually enough play to allow for some horizontal alignment. And as I said earlier, I used the back plate's mounting holes with the original screws to attach my custom solution. Now the rear element is exposed, and it can sit closer and even cover larger front elements of taking lenses. And while there are no rear threads and it only mounts with friction, I found that some step-down ring setups can still work fine with this. You do have to be careful though because the screws could scratch your taking lens. But in general, I found it could perform best when using taking lenses with smaller front elements like we see on those from mirrorless cameras. And with the right taking lens, image quality and coverage is pretty impressive. Just take a look at this comparison using the Panasonic 14 to 42 mm at f16 open gate on the GH5. So as you can see, the original lens only covers a portion of the zoom range, while the modified lens clears the entire zoom range and the image quality towards the telephoto end seems to be much improved over the original adapter. While the coverage is definitely impressive compared to the original 37mm adapter, on the wide end using this 14 to 42mm, you do see some soft and funky corners, and results will vary depending on your taking lenses. The original adapter with the 37mm rear threads is definitely a more reliable and secure option, and can even cover something like the 14mm f2.5 Prime from Panasonic on the GH5 which I used in a previous video when I traveled to the north of Japan, it was very snowy. But outside of that, I do tend to prefer the modified option if I'm gonna use this kind of lens. While I haven't torn down a 37mm Moondogs adapter, I do assume that the two versions have a similar optical design, but if you compare the backs, you can see that the 37mm is choked quite a bit, limiting your taking lens selection even further, while the modified adapter typically allows for wider angle lenses, or even lenses with larger front elements. And you can mount it in a way that the glass from both lenses sits much closer to each other, kind of unlocking more potential from these budget anamorphics. So is it worth modifying one of these for your own use? For me, it was a fun project that brought an otherwise broken lens back to life and even kind of took it to a new level, allowing it to be used on more powerful cameras than it was originally intended for. It allowed me to get some really interesting footage at a time before players like Surui entered the market. And being able to get full coverage on a power zoom like this, even with autofocus, is pretty interesting and something I never expected to do with anamorphic lenses. 
That being said, my 3D modeling technique is just amateur at best, and while it does open up some more possibilities and is borderline functional, it leaves some image quality on the table, with the optics being slightly askew, and it just isn't the most practical. I don't recommend picking up a brand new lens and tearing it down for this use. If you have a broken one, then by all means, but now you have much more options when it comes to the budget anamorphic space, and if you spend just a little bit more money, you could get something much more functional and professional for fun or even client work. That being said, I will put a link down in the description to the 3D file so you too can print something like this if you have any use for it, and if anyone thinks that they can improve upon this file or has any ideas to make it a little bit more practical, I'd be happy to talk and hopefully make this a little bit better for everyone to use. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. I'm David, and this is the whole picture.